A pregnant client, at 28 weeks gestation, is diagnosed with gestational diabetes mellitus. The nurse is providing education on glucose monitoring. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of the teaching? A. I will check my blood glucose level before meals and at bedtime. B. I will check my blood glucose level once a day, preferably in the morning. C. I will check my blood glucose level after each meal. D. I will check my blood glucose level only if I experience symptoms of hypoglycemia. The correct answer is. C. I will check my blood glucose after each meal. The NCLEX maternal fetal questions often ask about gestational diabetes. Here's the explanation. In gestational diabetes, monitoring blood glucose levels after meals, postprandial, is essential to evaluate the effectiveness of dietary modifications and maintain glucose control. Checking before meals and at bedtime, A, does not provide information about how well the client is managing their blood glucose levels after eating. Checking once a day in the morning, B, does not capture postprandial spikes in glucose levels. Waiting for symptoms of hypoglycemia to occur, D, is not an appropriate monitoring strategy. A pregnant client with gestational diabetes is prescribed insulin therapy to manage her blood glucose levels. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of insulin administration? A. I will inject insulin into my abdomen. B. I will inject insulin into my thigh. C. I will inject insulin into my buttock. D. I will inject insulin into my upper arm. The correct answer is. A. I will inject insulin into my abdomen. Explanation. Subcutaneous injection of insulin into the abdominal area is the preferred and most common site for insulin administration in pregnant clients with gestational diabetes. The abdomen has a higher rate of absorption and provides better glycemic control. Injection sites such as the thigh, buttock, and upper arm are not recommended for routine insulin administration due to variations in absorption rates and potential complications. A pregnant client at 10 weeks gestation presents to the prenatal clinic for her first visit. The nurse is discussing the importance of folic acid supplementation. The client asks, why do I need to take folic acid? What is the appropriate response by the nurse? A. Folic acid helps prevent neural tube defects in the baby. B. Folic acid increases your energy levels during pregnancy. C. Folic acid reduces the risk of preterm labor. D. Folic acid improves your immune system during pregnancy. The correct answer is. A. Folic acid helps prevent neural tube defects in the baby. Explanation. Folic acid supplementation is crucial during pregnancy to reduce the risk of neural tube defects, such as spina bifida, in the developing fetus. Option B is incorrect because folic acid does not directly increase energy levels. Option C is incorrect because folic acid is not primarily associated with the prevention of preterm labor. Option D is incorrect because folic acid's main role is not related to improving the immune system. If you want to listen to NCLEX practice questions on your smartphone, the link to our free podcast is in the description below, along with a link to our question bank on the website with over 2,000 questions. A pregnant patient, at 32 weeks gestation, presents to the clinic complaining of severe headache, blurred vision, and epigastric pain. Her blood pressure is 160 over 100. Which of the following actions should the nurse prioritize? A. Administer an antihypertensive medication. B. Administer an analgesic for headache relief. C. Assess deep tendon reflexes. D. Collect a urine specimen for protein testing. The correct answer is. D. Collect a urine specimen for protein testing. Explanation. The client's signs and symptoms, along with the elevated blood pressure, suggest the development of preeclampsia. The presence of proteinuria is a diagnostic criterion for preeclampsia. Assessing deep tendon reflexes, C, is important but collecting a urine specimen, D, should be the priority as it directly addresses the diagnostic criteria for preeclampsia. A client with gestational diabetes is scheduled for a non-stress test, NST. The client asks the nurse about the purpose of the test. What is the appropriate response by the nurse? A. 
the NST will assess the oxygenation of your baby during contractions. B. The NST will measure the amount of amniotic fluid surrounding your baby. C. The NST will monitor your blood glucose levels after meals. D. The NST will evaluate the well-being of your baby by measuring fetal heart rate patterns. The correct answer is D. The NST will evaluate the well-being of your baby by measuring fetal heart rate patterns. Explanation Non-stress testing is a common procedure used to assess fetal well-being in clients with gestational diabetes. It measures the fetal heart rate in response to the baby's movements, providing valuable information about fetal oxygenation and overall well-being. Option A is incorrect because it describes a contraction stress test, which is a different procedure. Options B and C are not related to the purpose of an NST. A pregnant client with preeclampsia is admitted to the antenatal unit. The healthcare provider prescribes magnesium sulfate for seizure prophylaxis. Which assessment should the nurse prioritize while the client is receiving magnesium sulfate? A. Blood pressure monitoring. B. Respiratory rate monitoring. C. Hourly urine output measurement. D. Reflex assessment. The correct answer is D. Reflex assessment. Explanation Magnesium sulfate is a common medication to prevent seizures in clients with preeclampsia. One of the side effects of magnesium sulfate is decreased deep tendon reflexes, which can be an early sign of toxicity. Therefore, reflex assessment, D, should be prioritized to monitor for adverse effects of the medication. A pregnant client with severe preeclampsia is scheduled for a cesarean section due to fetal distress. Before the procedure, the nurse should ensure the availability of which medication? A. Hydralazine. B. Oxytocin. C. Nifedipine. D. Magnesium sulfate. The correct answer is A. Hydralazine. Explanation In a client with severe preeclampsia, controlling blood pressure is crucial to prevent further complications. Hydralazine is an antihypertensive medication commonly used in the management of severe hypertension in pregnancy. Therefore, ensuring the availability of hydralazine, A, is essential before the client undergoes a cesarean section to manage her blood pressure effectively. A pregnant client is scheduled for an ultrasound at 20 weeks gestation. The nurse explains the purpose of the ultrasound to the client. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of the explanation? A. The ultrasound will determine the baby's gender. B. The ultrasound will check for any abnormalities in the baby's organs. C. The ultrasound will measure the baby's heart rate. D. The ultrasound will estimate the baby's weight. The correct answer is B. The ultrasound will check for any abnormalities in the baby's organs. Explanation A routine ultrasound at 20 weeks gestation is performed to evaluate the baby's organs and detect any structural abnormalities. Determining the baby's gender, measuring the heart rate, C, and estimating the weight, D, are not the primary purposes of the 20-week ultrasound. A pregnant client at 37 weeks gestation presents to the antenatal clinic for a checkup. The nurse measures the fundal height and finds it to be larger than expected for gestational age. The client's blood glucose levels have also been consistently elevated. Which of the following complications should the nurse suspect? A. Placenta previa. B. Ectopic pregnancy. C. Macrosomia. D. Preterm labor. The correct answer is C. Macrosomia. Explanation Macrosomia refers to the condition in which a newborn is significantly larger than average, usually weighing over 4,000 grams, 8.8 .8 pounds, at birth. In this question, the larger fundal height and consistently elevated blood glucose levels indicate the possibility of fetal macrosomia, which is commonly associated with maternal gestational diabetes. Placenta previa, A, is characterized by the abnormal placement of the placenta in the uterus and is unrelated to macrosomia. Ectopic pregnancy, B, refers to the implantation of the fertilized egg outside the uterus. Preterm labor, D, refers to labor that occurs before 37 weeks gestation. 
a pregnant client at 38 weeks gestation, is diagnosed with fetal macrosomia based on ultrasound findings. The nurse provides education to the client about potential complications associated with macrosomic infants. Which of the following complications should the nurse include in the discussion? A. Intrauterine growth restriction. B. Hypoglycemia. C. Premature rupture of membranes. D. Oligohydramnios. The correct answer is B. Hypoglycemia. Explanation Macrosomic infants born to mothers with gestational diabetes are at an increased risk of developing hypoglycemia shortly after birth. This occurs due to the excessive insulin production by the fetal pancreas in response to the high maternal glucose levels during pregnancy. Intrauterine growth restriction, A, refers to inadequate fetal growth, which is not applicable to macrosomia. Premature rupture of membranes, C, is the breaking of the amniotic sac before the onset of labor, unrelated to macrosomia.